First thing to notice about JPEG is it's not actually a file format, although everyone talks about JPEG files. JPEG is actually a compression method, much like the codec you would use in a video. Um, and we actually use the JPEG file interchange format, or JFIF, as the actual wrapper that holds that compressed data. So what happened was the Joint Photographic Experts Group, which is what JPEG stands for, came along and they created this incredibly complex specification of how you should compress image data. Um, very long, lots of different options. And what that means is that basically, in practice, you couldn't possibly hope to implement all the different options. Progressive JPEG, uh, sequential JPEG files, different color spaces. And so no one did. Someone came along and said, how about this JFIF format? And everyone went, actually, that's much easier. And now everyone just uses that. And more recently, um, the EXIF format, which has been sort of um, championed by the, the photographic industry and camera makers, um, has kind of joined with JFIF. And so you'll either have EXIF files or JFIF files, or both in the same file. Um, but they still have the .jpg. They all have .jpg. And so really, when we're talking about a JPEG file, we're actually talking about a JFIF file most of the time. But we just don't make that distinction. JPEG compression works in a very clever way. So first of all, it depends on the fact that we don't see colour quite as well uh, as we do grayscale, which is something we touched upon in our video on the biofilter. Two greens for every blue and red. And that's because our eyes are more sensitive to green than they are to blue and red. It also deals with the fact that we don't see high frequency changes in image intensity very well either. So we can get rid of some of that high frequency information. So bits of image that change intensity very, very quickly, we can kind of sort of blur out and those things will go away, we won't really see a difference, certainly if we're not zooming right in and looking at individual pixels. Um, so to start with, we'll talk, talk just about the colour aspects of JPEG. We have an input image here. What we want to do is try and shrink it down as small as possible for storage and then be able to extract as much as possible on the way out. So what we first do is we, um, we change the colour space. We transform it into the YCBCR colour space, which is what we spoke about in our uh, little video on colour spaces. What we're trying to do with YCBCR is separate the luminosity of an image, so the intensity of each pixel, from the actual colour. After we've converted to YCBCR, we downsample and essentially reduce the amount of colour in our image. And that lets us save quite a lot of space without actually uh, seeing any difference in the image quality. Uh, we then apply a discrete cosine transform, which is a fairly complicated mathematical technique, which hopefully I can explain in a slightly, slightly easy to understand way. And then we quantize it, which is the actual lossy part of the JPEG compression. Then we encode it, and that's our file. What does lossy mean? Some file formats that we encounter, like uh, BMP and um, PNG, are losslessly compressed. So um, there we essentially, it's equivalent to putting them in a zip file. You might use LZ compression or something, something more complicated. But generally speaking, you take the image data, you compress it in such a way that when you uncompress it, the other side is exactly the same. I believe that uh, Professor Brailsford did a video on LZ compression. In JPEG, the compression is almost always lossy. You aren't guaranteed the same image at, at, when you output it as you did as you put in. However, it will be very, very close most of the time. And the advantage of loss, lossy compression is that you get a huge amount more compression for your money. JPEG allowed you to do any basically any colour space you wanted. You could use RGB, you could use YCBCR, or you could use CIE Lab, and all, all these different ones. And because of the fact that it's totally impractical to program up every single possible colour space in your own JPEG encoder or decoder, most people didn't. Most people just followed the JFIF standard, which is just YCBCR, very occasionally RGB. Okay, so we're going to assume for the rest of this video that we're talking about JFIF, which is essentially a small subset of the JPEG standard. So we take our image, which is in RGB, and we convert it into YCBCR. And what that does is separate out the luminance and the chrominance components. And as we talked about in our other video, luminance represents essentially the brightness of the image, and it's a grayscale component. Um, and the CB and CR represent the blueness and the redness of our image. Um, but both of these values fall, after conversion, in a JFIF standard, fall into the range of 0 to 255. So the, the amount of data that YCBCR holds is exactly the same as the 0-255 RGB. One of the nice things about YCBCR is that human eye doesn't really see chrominance very well. It's certainly a much lower resolution than we see changes in intensity. Um, so just like with TV encoding, what we can do is we can massively downsample the amount of CB and CR that we see in the image and 
most humans, unless you're zooming right in on the pixels, won't see any difference at all. So to, to, to use a demonstration, this is a flower picture that I took, and this picture on the right has had the chrome and its components downsampled by a factor of 10 in both directions, so 100 overall. There's 100 times less colour in this picture than there is in this one. And to my eye, they look almost exactly the same. And that's because my eye only sees the grayscale and a little bit of colour. If you zoom right in on these pixels, you can see right on the edge of some of these petals here, you can see slight discrepancies where the colour and the grey don't match up. But at a normal level of zoom, the sort of level of zoom of your computer monitor or a screen you're looking at or a photograph, you're never going to see the difference. And we've managed to save a huge amount of space by getting rid of a huge amount of colour information. Once we've transformed into YCBCR, we have to decide how much downsampling we think we can get away with. In general, it's very common to downsample the colour by a factor of two in both directions. So essentially, you have four times less colour. For every four Y pixels, you only have one CBCR pixel. Okay? You might also downsample by a factor of two only in the vertical direction and keep the horizontal, depending on how much space you want to save. In general, downsampling by that much, you won't see much of a change in the image. So you can get away with quite a lot. So downsampling is sometimes tied to the quality of a JPEG that you output. So in some software, you will say, I want it a quality of 85. And it will decide how much downsampling that is and how much uh, other compression that it does later on in the stages. In general, most software will use a downsampling of two in both, um, so four times less color. But you might find if you choose the highest quality in a software such as Photoshop, it won't downsample at all and it will have the same resolution of colour to grayscale. So once we've taken our RGB image, we've converted it into YCBCR and we've done whatever downsampling we think is necessary or that we can get away with, that's when we pass this information onto the DCT, the discrete cosine transform, uh, which is right at the core of how JPEG compression works. Uh, but that's for another video. There's a low frequency change from this black table to a brightness over my jumper to dark table again. And there's much higher frequency changes on my jumper where we go up and down within sort of the woolen knit. And it's the same kind of principle.